Sick Harrison Price from Wall Center presentation, Applewood Auto Group. You can text us 778-402-9680. It's the Great Clips text message inbox, and we've been telling you since the start of the playoffs, the daily face-off playoff parlay challenge. Each game day, answer four questions, pick the winning team, guess if points will be over or under, predict the first goal, and choose the highest scoring period, daily winner snag gift cards, the champs of each round, pocket straight cash, games.dailyfaceoff. Dot com. Speaking of daily face off, right? That was my segue here, Blake. You know, our, <laughs> I, I wanted our, to get in our friends and partners at the Nation Network. They do all sorts of shows and blogs across the country and of the daily face off in Oilers Nation. In studio, he's here in Vancouver covering the series, doing his show. It's a pleasure to welcome Tyler Yaremchuk to the program. It's Cares and Price debut. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to earn that is. free coffee I got from upstairs. There right, you go. happy to hop You're on. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So, how'd you enjoy the game? <laughs> uh, well, I sit in the stands and I wear an Oilers jersey. I do not hide that. Um, some yappy Canucks fans, but nothing, mm. uh, nothing too wild. It's going to be a spicy series. That's what you want—a one anthem playoff series. It's mm. good to have a little banter back and forth. It was spicy, but I loved it. Did you think it was game over at two buzz or four one? I, I kind of, yeah, because mm -hmm. I, I was thinking that this is an Oilers team that had finally learned all their lessons of the past. Like how many times when you talk about whether it's the avalanche or even the lightning, uh, uh, you know, five, six years ago now where it's like, okay, you, they learned their tough lessons with all their playoff exits. And it was like, ah, I, I like to think Edmonton learned all those lessons. Clearly they had one more lesson to learn and it was blowing that game, uh, blowing that game last night. They didn't play particularly well to even go up for one. But still, with with it being a three goal deficit, getting close to the to the third period there before it was made four two, with the way the Oilers handled the Kings, it was kind of like, yeah, okay, I I think I trust the Oilers here. Shouldn't have. Have we seen the last five four game in this series? Do you think, or is there more of that? Given there's a twenty three year old and twenty five year old in net, and they have yet to prove themselves. I, I think we got a couple more high-scoring games in us in this series. And that's not even to say Stuart Skinner won't bounce back or she loves won't bounce back. I, I think, obviously, they're both good young goalies. And Skinner, in, in the series against L.A., to his credit, he had a real stinker in Game 2, and he bounced back and was nails in Games 3 and 4, only giving up the one goal on the road in L.A. So I think Skinner has a bounce back in him. But I, when I say we're going to have more high-scoring games, it's – more a comment on the players in front of the goalies. I think there's just too much high-powered offense on these two rosters for it to, for us to have four or five more games that are all going to be two, one, or three, two. We were saying coming from that Preds series, uh, like it, there just seems to be acres of space out there. You mm. know, the Preds just all collapsed in front of their own net, and you just, you, you know, you, you wondered it was like uh, parking the bus in soccer. Like you just wondered how were they supposed to get it. It, it just feels like this is going to be a looser, looser series. And that's kind of how these two played in the regular season as well. Mm -hmm. I The Canucks got their offense going against the Oilers. Mm -hmm. And again, I thought Edmonton did a good job against LA of buttoning it down a little bit and playing decent defensive hockey. But there's just there seems to be something about playing the Canucks that just forces them or makes them abandon their, their game plan. It's yeah, wild. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, do you believe cramping and equipment issues right. fully on dry sidle? And how concerned are you there? I don't believe it for a second. I, I think the word <laughs> cramping is interesting. You know, if Chris Knobloch would have came out and said something like spasms, maybe I would have believed him because, I mean, Dry right. did come back out onto the ice. There wasn't one clear moment where he took a hit and you were like, whoa, he's slow getting up and he's wobbling off the ice. So, you know, maybe it's something as minor as a spasm thing. And am I concerned? I'll say no, just because we've seen in the past what Leon Dry not only is willing to play through, but what he can be effective through as well. You remember a couple of years ago, he had that high ankle sprain that he sustained in game two or three against the Kings. And how good was he against the Calgary Flames in that BOA? Like he was a well above a point per game player and they were taking wax at that leg too. It was the worst. High ankle sprains ever. are the worst too. Like they are, they're debilitating. Yeah. And he found a way to grind through yeah. that. So, you know, concerned. I mean, I, I think Leon Dreisaitl at 80% is still better than everyone on the roster but Connor McDavid. Leon Dreisaitl at 70% is probably better than everyone on the roster but Connor McDavid. And, and we know what he can be effective when, when – he we know he can be effective when playing through stuff, so not overly concerned. Do you think 5-0 and is now a psychological hurdle for the Oilers? 
We're zero and five. Skinner mentioned it again yeah. last night after the after the game. So that's what perked our ears up. If they keep trotting it out, they know what the record is right now. Yeah, and and uh, Drysaddle did that interview with Friedman earlier in the season where he named the Canucks as you know the team he most like or he one of the teams he most enjoys beating, and yeah. he said because they had our number earlier in the season, right? right? So I I think it's absolutely in their heads. I think it takes one good game for it to be out of their heads though, right? Like if they come out in game two and not that this would even be my prediction, but if they come out in game two and go up four one and hold on four one, then I I think all of a sudden any talk about the record, it's not like they'll be sitting there going, Oh boy, we're only one in five now. So it's a problem till it's not as much of a lame answer as that is. The one thing I've said, I think there are still moments in which Canucks fans got really scared last night. And usually anytime McDavid touches the puck, although he's very sound, we'll get to that maybe in a second here too, but but down low, up a man, whether it was on the one power play or six on five, um, you know, either Drysaddle shooting the puck from that goal line location or he's trying to feather it across to, to Zach Hyman. Have you seen any teams successfully thwart that on, on the regular? Like, what is the defense of that of, of that play down to Drysaddle, either for a shot or for the pass? Well, the defense, and, and actually Leon Drysaddle from, call it his office, mm-hmm. um, he wasn't that good from there in the regular season. Like oh, you're team, leaving. Teams stopped it somehow, yeah. or, and they weren't going to it as much. But what makes the Oilers so dangerous and what is now making or what made it so hard for L.A. to stop is the fact that the Oilers power play obviously elite, but it's like an elite pitcher who's got seven elite pitches. Mm-hmm. You, you just don't know what's coming. I think back to in that series against L.A., the first power play they had, they totally switched everything up. Dreisaitl was in front of the net. Nuge was on what would be the right wing. McDavid was on the left wing. Everybody moved positions, and it almost looked like the Kings were out there scrambling right from the get-go. And the Oilers, it was the only power play of that game they didn't score on, but I thought it was actually their best power play in terms of generating chances. And from that point on, they started putting Dreisaitl back in his office sometimes, and then boom, he was open. Then they'd move him away from there for the next power play. And just the fact that they're so creative right now, it's opening up that lane again because it's not like you can just sit down in a 30 minute film session and go, this is what the Oilers are doing to make them successful. It's that pass to dry settle. It's not like the OV one timer back in the day, where if you gave them that option for half a second, they'd hurt you with that option. And only that option, the Oilers just have so many other avenues to beat you yep. that you can't afford to just throw a guy on dry settle and keep them there for the whole power play. Because McDavid and Hyman will kill you with their backdoor player. They'll start feeding Evan Bouchard, who's developed into an elite power play producer. So there's just too many options to zero in on one to stop it. And that's yeah. the problem teams have. And, and I'll say this, uh, and Blake and I are getting reconnected here because it's been four years for the Canucks in the postseason, and it's been eight years uh, for the Canucks in the postseason with games here in the city. But you just think of the margins in series. I mean, the Oilers are this close to winning a hockey game where they get one power play opportunity, convert it, get goals from Ekholm and CeCe, and on a night where McDavid does almost nothing. Like, if the Oilers win that game, I think Vancouver has to look at itself and go, oh, yeah, we did just about everything right and lost the hockey game instead. Edmonton has to soul search here a little bit. Yeah, it would have been a night where Edmonton wins with their C plus B minus game kind of thing, because Mm -hmm. there are so many nights where the power play carries them. McDavid carries them first time in his playoff career. He's been held without a shot on net, which is wild. And again, the Oilers got one power play in that game. It was a too many men penalty 40 seconds in. And I do think, and I don't want this to come off as like Homerish or whatever, but officiating is going to dictate the outcome of this series. Very, very heavily. We talked about it earlier in the week that if you're the Canucks, you want a series where the two guys with orange arm armbands let you play. Like yep. if they're quick on whistles and we're seeing power plays a plenty, I think that's advantage Edmonton. Like there was even a play two or three minutes in where McDavid was trying to get up the ice, and I think it was Miller, might have been someone else, was just grabbed onto him. And McDavid's like trying to swim through this check. And I mean, McDavid and Steve Kazari have a bit of an interesting history oh, together. What's this? So, tell? so there was a moment, it was earlier on in McDavid's career, I want to say 2016, 2017, he uh, scored a goal that got disallowed, and then he went and scored a goal in the shootout, and as McDavid was skating past Kazari, he went and go said, look upstairs, 
look upstairs and point it up. And Kazari gave McDavid the only 10 minute misconduct he's ever had. Whoa. And, he, and he went through it and gave him the misconduct once the game was done, like oh. yeah. kind of went out of his way. And ever since then, if you look at the numbers when Kazari refs the Oilers, I know scouting the refs, I believe, has done this. <laughs> the power plays are greatly t- are greatly down and they're a little tilted in the other team's favor. So as soon as I saw Kazari was refing last night, Oilers fans on Twitter were doing this. They were like, here we go. Yep. Here we go. Maybe the uh, league couple... will even it up and, and send uh, Kelly, Kelly Stubbs. Yeah. For... yeah, he's he's the Canucks script tonight. <laughs> yeah. uh, and the um show continues even in this sport, uh, yeah, apparently yeah. with Kazari. So, again, to see the one power play last night wasn't overly surprising. And in the series against L.A., right, like there were nights where there was like 12 total power plays. And the Oilers scored three power play goals. And it's like, well, you're basically, if, you, if it's going to be a game like that, you're basically conceding the, that you're spotting the Oilers a goal or two. And I saw the moment you're talking about, by the way, and that was a total uh, game management non-call and that we just gave them kind of a, a an easy penalty on the too many men. We're not going to put them back on at, in the fourth minute of the game. You Especially know? when they're that good and it'll yeah. be 2 nothing. then what? You're going to have Rick Tockett in your ear the yeah, whole exactly. game being like, you yeah. gave him this one, you gave him this yeah. one. So it was total game management. Oh, uh, game management and NHL officials. So uh, you've done your show, right? Like, are, do you have like a free day in Vancouver now on a sunny? I I wish. So I did the DFO rundown with uh, Sarah Valley and Gregor earlier okay. this morning already. So I haven't posted that yet. I haven't had time, but I'll edit that up. They did a ton on uh, the coaching searches around the NHL. Right. What jobs are most right. desirable? Did DFO live with Frank where we dug into that. And then I got Oilers Nation every day ah. at 11. And then I got a fun little podcast we do called the Real Life Podcast. That'll be one o'clock. So a couple more pods for me today. Damn, to you're busy. Through. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Get to a beach. I know later it looks so nice outside. Okay, uh, you've arrived like exactly when the weather is turning. It's going the into the twenties today. Take right? advantage yeah. of uh, all Vancouver's yeah. splendor. I'd like to park my behind at a brewery at some point. There, there you, you go. go. Play. Thanks for the time, buddy. Yeah. Good seeing no you. Problem. Thanks, Tyler. You Remchuk of the Daily Faceoff and Oilers Nation in town for the series. Hey, everybody! If you're enjoying what you're seeing here. Then follow along with Sakaris and Price on YouTube. I promise more content coming. They call it, the kids call it subscribe on YouTube. Well, how about liking it? Do that as well. Smash it right now.